ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Because champions are made, not for. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Yes, it's a break for all of us that champions are made, not born. Gives us all a chance. Take Richie Ashburn, speedy center fielder for the Philadelphia Phillies. When Richie was just a lad of five, already he had lots of drive. He practiced hitting, shagging flies. And in the morning, he was wise. He ate his Wheaties like champs advise. Now that Rich has made his mark, he still gets plenty of Wheaties spark. Richie Ashburn, a steady Wheaties eater now for 21 years. Top nourishment Wheaties... There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Now watch Richie earn his pay. Here's the pitch. Hey, hey, hey! He's on his way. On his way. He's on his way. On his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I am Silver. Hey! When the market price for cattle reached an all-time low, causing hardship in the southwest, the Lone Ranger made a suggestion to the territorial commissioner. There's a big market for cattle in Mexico. You might solve the problem of the ranchers here by getting a repeal of the law that prohibits the sale or transfer of cattle across the border. The commissioner acted on the suggestion. The law was repealed, and ranchers were jubilant. But rancher Jack Morrow and cafe owner Pete Randall were pleased for another reason. Partners in crime before coming to Hastings... They sat in Randall's cafe and discussed a plan. He's a fortune in rustling cattle and selling it in Mexico. Well, just one thing, Pete. I don't mind using my ranch as a cover for the men in our gang. But I don't want any stolen cattle there. No but better place to hold it? Oh, yes. We used the Bars Canyon where we hid when we first came here. Yes. There's high cliffs on three sides, and we've put a barricade with a gate across the only entrance. Good enough. Who will you have lead the raid? My foreman, Raleigh Meadows. <laughs> After a series of raids, the Box Canyon held a thousand head of stolen cattle. Then Pete and Jack met again in the cafe. Jack Morrow said, Pete, uh, I'm getting worried about something we didn't pay too much attention to at first. Yeah, what's it? Well, that license thing. Yeah. That's becoming a big item. Do you know that any time I sell cattle, whether it's one hit or a hundred, I'll have to record my license number on the deal? The Mexican will have to do the same thing. That could be bad, couldn't it? Yeah, it is bad. The commissioner's office has a rough idea of how many cattle we own at the Circle Lamp. If later on the records show we've sold a thousand more than we're supposed to own, well, the answer to who's rustling would be easy. Uh, but uh, don't worry, Jack. We'll find a way to get around that. Right now, uh, let's get a line on prices. The Mexican buyers are starting to come to town. And if we put a... Late that evening in the town of Hastings, Commissioner Grady sat in his office with Sheriff Tom Niles. They were checking names and figures on sheets of paper which covered the table when an Indian entered. Commissioner Grady leaped to his feet and welcomed the Indian. Tono, how good to see you again. So soon. I thought you'd be heading north. I'm that right, but we come back. Tono explained that he and the Lone Ranger had heard stories of the rustling and had returned to offer their help. Then, at Commissioner Grady's request, Tonto brought the masked man to a secret meeting with Sheriff Niles and the commissioner. After discussing the rustling, the lawman said, I'm sure the rustlers live near here. 
All the rustling has taken place around Hastings. Are there many strangers in town? Uh, no. So one of the ranch owners may have decided to get rich quick by rustling. And the question is, which rancher? Well, what about the trading licenses, Commissioner? Can't they help you keep track of how many cattle are bought and sold? And I had my deputies check on this list. Oh? They went out on the range and to the ranches. Their checks show that no ranch has more beef than is listed. If a thousand head of cattle has been stolen, someone must have a thousand head of cattle hidden somewhere. That's logical. We have the border covered, and no cattle have been taken across it. Hmm. Commissioner, is it true that cattle buyers are coming into Hastings daily? Yes, every day. When they cross the border, this is one of the first towns they come to. Some of them make immediate arrangements to have cattle shipped south when the trading starts two weeks from now. The rustlers must know that if they try to pass off the stolen cattle as their own, they're liable to be exposed. Ah, you mean having to give their trading license number and all that, huh? Mm. It would be hard for them to get away with selling a thousand more head than they're supposed to own. And that's my thought exactly. So if another crook came into the picture, a Mexican crook, say? Mm, a Mexican crook. I'll pose as a crook named Pedro Almanez and hope the rustlers will try to do business with me. Good idea. How can we help? Well, I'll need clothes to make me look like a Mexican cattleman. Uh, will you need money? I'll keep a record of expenses. I'll see that you're reimbursed. Now, anything else? Yes, Commissioner. You might spread the word that a man calling himself Pedro Almanez has crossed the border. The Commissioner had bulletins printed and posted as quickly as possible. They warned ranchers to transact no business with Pedro Almanez. And soon the name of the fictitious cattleman was on everyone's lips. And in the cafe, Jack Morrow, Raleigh Meadows, and Pete Randall were talking. I never heard tell of Almanez. But then there's lots of Mexicans I never heard tell of. Well, he must be a dangerous hombre when they put up signs like that about him. Don't you think so, Pete? Yeah. You know, it's too bad he didn't sneak into town without the law knowing it. If he's as clever as everyone says, and if he does business in cash, well, I'd just like to have done business with him, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Especially if he does business for cash. Yeah. Well, let's forget about the Mexican. We have problems of our own. Holly, are your boys going to the canyon and change the brands on the cattle? Yeah, they'll take care of it tonight. Good. Now, Jack, yeah. what we have to figure out is a way to start selling those beef without getting caught. Uh-huh. We can make a few legitimate sales to start off, and nobody will be the wiser. But later on... A short distance up the street in the sheriff's office... The Lone Ranger, disguised as a dashing Mexican cattleman, prepared to leave Toto, the sheriff, and Commissioner Grady. Perhaps nothing will happen, but I think this plan's worth trying. You're right. Because, as you said before, crooks have a habit of getting around to the cafes. If any of the rustling crowds around, they may become interested in you. <laughs> but some of the righteous citizens, if they believe the bulletins about Almanez, may want the sheriff to arrest me. <laughs> uh, don't worry about that. I'll explain it isn't a wanted poster that's hanging on the buildings. I'll tell him it's just a warning. Do you think it advisable for us to remain here? Yes, please. Tato, you follow me and watch what happens. Ah, well, that's probably the best. You might be scared off if they saw me or one of my deputies shadowing you around. I'll go out this rear door then and start making a round of the cafes. Adios. Goodbye. Good luck. Good luck. The nightlife in the cafes of Hastings had become electric. A Mexican, talkative and seemingly under the influence of tequila, was making a round of the places and making his presence known. Senors, those posters that warn you about Pedro Almanez, they're all lies. Lies, I say. <laughs> Poof, i show you what I think of those posters. See, I tear this poster off the wall. And then I tear it in little pieces like this. See? <laughs> what about the sheriff, Almanez? Aren't you afraid the sheriff may see you doing that? Oh, 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 oh. amigo, I do not give tooth and towels for your sheriff or for any lawman. And yours, if lawman could prove anything against me, I would not be here. But I am here. Oh, it stands to reason I am smarter than they are, huh? <laughs> ah, but sure. So, who needs to buy cows? Not me. I play the narrow. Instead of cows, I buy drinks for my Americano friends. Come, amigos, drink. Hey, you hear that, boys? He's going to buy drinks. Yeah. Is that right, Amadeus? Si. 
Easy. For everybody here, by the Come to the bar and be the guest of these pacanos. <laughs> Continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. When Bill's up fast, the kids all shout. You can't strike that slugger out. He gets a hit because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Sure, Cheerios, the cereal that's fun to eat because it's shaped like little letter O's. The only ready-to-eat oat cereal with this fresh, toasted oat flavor. And listen, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So every morning, get going and keep going with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. Word of Almanez and his lavish spending had preceded him to Pete Randall's cafe. By the time he arrived there, once more making a flamboyant entrance, Pete Randall was ready for him. The cafe owner opened his office door and looked into the well-filled room where men crowded around the bar where the Mexican held sway. Randall turned to Jack Morrow and Raleigh Meadows, who were glancing over his shoulder. Well, there he is, boys. The hombre we were talking about and wish we could do business with. He sure doesn't act like a smart one. He's smart, all right, or the law wouldn't be so worried about him. Well, what do you say? You want to talk with him and feel him out about things? What can we lose? Yeah, that's right, Raleigh. Go and talk to him on the quiet. See if they'll meet us outside. Raleigh found it easy to arrange for a meeting. The Lone Ranger, posing as the Mexican crook, lingered a short time in the cafe, then left. He strolled along the boardwalk until he saw Tonto waiting in the shadows. He halted and pretended to brush and adjust his hat while he said, Tonto, little Sheriff Niles and Commissioner Grady to find some way to hide in the blacksmith's shop on the corner. To meet someone there in an hour. Uh, you tell him, Kimasabi. The Lone Ranger continued on his way. Fifty minutes later, as he walked to the rear of the building that housed the blacksmith shop, he heard a voice speak from the half open window. This is Commissioner Grady. We're in here. We'll be listening. <laughs> Ten minutes after his arrival, three figures appeared from the underbrush nearby. Jack Morrow, Raleigh Meadows, and Pete Randall walked up to the man in Mexican dress. Yeah, you got here early, huh, Almanis? Yeah, the early bird, they say, catches the worm, senor. <laughs> Except that I'm no worm. Almanis, let me introduce my friends, Jack and Pete. Without using last names, Raleigh Meadows introduced the leaders of the Rustlers gang. Well, senor, we've heard a lot about you. <laughs> I assure you, Senor Jack, that what you heard was not true. <laughs> I bet it isn't. Uh, why are you in Hastings? <laughs> you do not know, Senor. Everybody else seems to know. It tells on the bulletins everywhere why I'm here. I want, um... Well, you guess what I want, huh? You uh, don't have a license to trade, do you? If I did, I would not be sneaking behind blacksmith shops. Senors, let us not waste time. You either have what they want or you have not. So what is the answer? Well, let's put it right on the line. How many, how many head can you use? Well, how many can you show me? One hundred? Two hundred? One thousand? Two thousand? Hey, hey, he wants a lot of them. Will you pay cash for them? When I buy, I always pay cash. If I do not have the necessary sum on hand, I get the rest in a very short time. Uh, one thing more. If you were to buy a thousand or more steers, how would you get them over the border? Do not worry about that part. If I see there the cattle I want, you deliver them to me at the river bank. Yeah, that seems fair enough. Keep out of this, will you, Raleigh? How many is we do have some cattle to sell, and we're willing to sell them off the record. You know what I mean? 
Senor, I know perfectly what you mean. But uh, before I make an offer, I must see the animal. You show them to you. Yeah, but we'll blindfold you once we get you up in the hills. Blindfold me? Yes. You're not going to know where the place is where we have the beef. Not until you pay for the service. That's fair enough, senor. You may blindfold me. In your place, I would take these same precautions. Hey, he's an all right hombre, huh? Never mind, Rolly. Just get the horses. How many is? You get mounted, we'll take off for the hill. Soon after the three rustlers and the disguised Lone Ranger left, the door of the blacksmith shop opened, and Sheriff Niles emerged with Commissioner Grady and Tonto. The sheriff said, Jack Morrow and Pete Randall. So they're the rustlers. Who's Raleigh? Morrow's foreman at the Circle M. We better hurry. Or maybe we're not able to follow. You and Commissioner Grady go after them, Tonto. I'll swear in a posse. Leave a trail that we can follow. Uh, we take paper from shop, tear it in pieces, leave trail for you follow. Get up, get on the cut. Remaining unseen, Tonto and Commissioner Grady followed the Lone Ranger and the rustlers through the moonlight. As they rode, the Indian dropped torn bits of paper on the ground behind him. After several hours of riding through hills over rough country and off all beaten paths, Tonto and his companion saw the men stop and dismount at a narrow gap in an almost perpendicular wall. We stopped here. Oh, 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 oh. That seems to be some kind of a canyon. Uh, maybe it widened out of the side entrance. Maybe big space on the other side. Wait, I hear steers. Sound come from beyond the gap. Uh, sound like an in pain. At the narrow gap, which was less than 30 feet wide, Jack Morrow and Pete Randall talked with the disguised Lone Ranger. We'll take the blindfold off in a minute. Light the lantern, Jack. Yeah, that's just what I'm doing. Golly, open the gate, go through the gap to the box canyon, and tell the boys to stop branding those cars for a while. We're going to inspect them. All right, Pete. Hey, boys! Here's a light, Pete. Yeah. Raleigh went through the narrow gap to a vast area that was surrounded by high cliffs. It was here that the rustlers were branding the stolen cattle. At the narrow gap, Jack Morrow lifted the lantern. Here, Pete. You'll see better with this. Untie that knot on Almanez's blindfold. Yeah, sure. Here, let me take it off, Almanez. Very well. There you are. Now we'll take you to the cattle. We'll have to get through this narrow gap in single file. Pete, that, that handkerchief, the blindfold. What about it? Look at it. Speak with Brown. How did... Hey, look at his face. It's white where the blindfold was. Well, I'll be... He has Brown stuff on his face. He's not a Mexican. Watch out, grab him. Give me that card. Why, you dirty... He got that lantern. I fell, but it's still lit. Jack, turn him around. Let me get a good shot at him. I'm trying to... There you are. Oh, my arm, I'm shot. Here you are, Jack. Come on. Ah, must have me fired just when I'm going to shoot. Nice shot, Toto. Uh, me take that gun. No, I'll take the lamp. Uh, me have gun. Toto, the rustlers heard the shots. They're heading his way. And I have no gun. Can't be helped, Commissioner. Hey. Time tomorrow. We'll hold them off. That gap's narrow, and they'll have to come out through the gate. Hey, Pete! Jack! What's the matter? Who's shooting? Pete, tell him everything's all right, or you'll get another bullet. Don't shoot again. Raleigh, it's all right. Nothing's wrong. Hey, Pete! Tonto stood ready, and as Raleigh came through the gate and saw Pete, the Indian used hey, his gun as a club. Hey, Pete, you're bleeding. You're hurt. Oh. Gun hit him right on head. And now you'll have to use it for shooting again. Get ready. Raleigh, what was that shot? All right, Tonto, open fire. Chase them back into the gulch. Uh-huh. Hey, 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 who is that? What's the idea? Tell them, Commissioner. Sure. This is Commissioner Grady, and the idea is that you're all under arrest. If you try to resist, we'll kill you. That's it. You don't have a chance. We know who you are and what you've done. Listen, Kimasabi. Riders come. It's the sheriff and his men. This way, sheriff. Fire a gun so you can know where we are. This way, sheriff. You hear that, you rustlers? The sheriff's posse's here. We have your leaders arrested. You can't get out of there. And if you don't want to be shot, you... You go, we get up. We followed your trail. Are we in time? Yes. Just keep riding and make prisoners of the men beyond that gap. This is a big night, Sheriff. The next morning, with Jack...
Jack Morrow, Pete Randall, Raleigh Meadows, and their gang under arrest. Ranchers rode into the town of Hastings, reclaiming cattle which had been stolen from their ranches a week or two earlier. Sheriff Niles and Commissioner Grady watched them. The sheriff said, I wish the masked man was here to see how happy he's made all those ranchers. He wouldn't stay around when his job was done. Well, he should have been rewarded for what he did. Yeah, that's what I thought, but he wouldn't take a cent over what he spent in the cafe. Uh, hey, boys, uh, are you sure now that all of you have your own cattle again? Yeah, we sure have. Thanks for bringing them into town. Uh, he had the rustlers do that. He did? Who's he? The man who pretended to be Pedro Almanez. Huh? When there wasn't any person named Almanez. It was a character he made up to catch the rustlers. And he caught them. Well, yeah, but who's he? Well, he is also the one responsible for the repeal of the old law to make it possible for you to trade with Mexico again and become prosperous. Uh, huh? Yep. But you still haven't told us who he is. Right. He's the reason you and everyone else in this territory has a future to look to. You ought to guess by now that he's the Lone Ranger. Copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.